Good morning, good morning. Welcome again to our Wednesday Bible study. We thank you so much for joining us as we go through this series on the story of the life of David, King of the Jews. We're examining his life and trying to find the process that made him the greatest king in Israel's history. Today we're going to start at 1 Samuel chapter 21. Then came David to Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David and said unto him, Why art thou alone, and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech, the priest, The king had commanded me a business and had said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under thy hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is hallowed bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out. The vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common. Yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread that was taken from before Jehovah to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Later, David would write in Psalm 119.29, Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. We see very clearly that David made up this story about being on a mission from the king. Verse seven. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day detained before Jehovah. And his name was Doeg and Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. And David said unto Ahimelech, and is there not here under thy hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Eli, behold, it is here, wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it. For there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul, and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was so afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of madmen, that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Now, this is what happened. And what you need to understand is Gath is a Philistine city. So now David is in the presence of the king of a Philistine city. And the people there know him. 
They say, this is the guy they sing about. So David plays the fool, plays like he's mad. And when you look at Psalm chapter 34, when you look in your Bible, you read, there's a heading there, a Psalm of David, when he changed his head, behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. All right, so now we know that uh, the king that of, of, of Gath's name was Achish, but Abimelech is a common uh, Philistine term for their king. If you remember when Abraham went to the Philistine cities and one of the kings saw Sarah and he told Sarah to tell them that she was his sister, that king was also called Abimelech. But we saw what happened uh, with David. Now we see what David thought in Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their face were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that Jehovah is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Now, David is on the run. He had to leave the palace and his dearest friend because his life was in danger, but he does not pray. He travels to Nob and meets Ahimelech the priest and he lies to the priest about why he's there. Even a man after God's own heart strays. He asks for food and all that is available is the showbread or hallowed bread. Now, Jewish tradition held that and the law held every Sabbath, 12 fresh loaves were placed on the table in the tabernacle before the Lord the old bread taken away and fresh bread was put in its place. And the old bread was only to be eaten by the priests, but David claimed them for himself and his attendants, if you will. Now, Jesus speaks of this episode in Matthew chapter 12, verse 3, Mark chapter 2, verse 25, and Luke chapter 6, verse number 3. Now, there appears to be, even though we know David lied about what he was what his mission was and he lied about having to have some servants with him or tendants with him but he did need some food and it appeared to be a law of necessity as the bread was really for the priests only now when jesus spoke of it he identified it as unlawful but necessary just as his disciples plucking corn and eating corn on the sabbath which is the episode in which Jesus brought this incident up. David and his men were starving, so the priest asked God if it was all right to give him the bread. At least the priest went to God. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 10. And he inquired of the Lord for him and gave him victuals and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. So before he gave him the food, he talked to God about it. That's what David should have done. He's on the run, but he's spiraling out of control. He's now relying on himself rather than the Lord, relying on his ability to make up a convincing story to get the bread from the priest, relying on his ability to fool the king of Gath. When he leaves Jonathan, he does not pray. He just runs. When he meets Ahimelech, the priest, he lies, but he does not pray. While there, he's spotted by Doeg, a servant of Saul, and he knew he was Saul's servant because he was chief over his herdsmen, but he still did not pray. He leaves with the sword of Goliath and goes to Achish, king of Gath. Instead of asking for guidance in prayer, he goes to the Philistines. He goes to the enemy. Can you see David is spiraling out of control? As he comes, he hears the report to the king that they know who he is and they're afraid. He's afraid of Saul. No prayer runs away. He's hungry. 
No prayer. He lies. Afraid of Achish. No prayer. He plays crazy. Listen, church. Adversity can cause us to do strange things. Thus, we must beware. It's easier to avoid those pitfalls when you know they are possible. God loved David and called him a man after his own heart. But David was flawed and failing in his faith, just like we are. Now our aim in this lesson is to find out how David got to where he was and adversity plays a huge part in his development. Even though he sins, his heart is such as to repent. This is part of the process. Remember Psalms 119, 29. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. David later recognizes I was lying. I lied, but I need God. I need you to help me and remove it. And so what should be our first step when we meet adversity? I hope everybody says to pray. Chapter 22. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab. And he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart, and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Herath. When Saul heard that David was discovered, and the men that were with him, now Saul abode in Gibeah under a tree in Ramah, having his spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. Then Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, that all of you have conspired against me, and there is none that showeth me that my son hath made a league with the son of Jesse? There is none of you that is sorry for me. Or showeth unto me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie and wait as at this day. So now Saul is scolding his own servants. Like, you didn't even tell me that Jonathan was in league with David. You didn't even tell me where he is. Verse 9. Then answered Doeg the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ahimelech the son of Ahitub. And he inquired of Jehovah for him and gave him victuals and gave him the sword of Goliath the Philistine. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob, and they came, all of them, to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, you son of Ahitub. And he answered, Here, am I, here I am, my lord. And Saul said unto him, why have ye conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, in that thou hast given him bread and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait as at this day? Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house. So now Saul is trying to scold the priest. The priest said, wait a minute. David is one of your most faithful servants. He's your son-in-law. Why do you think it's difficult for me to help him and ask God about him? Verse 15, did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father. For thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. So you remember David told him he was on a mission for the king. Verse 16. And the king said, Thou shalt surely die, Ahimelech, thou and all thy father's house. You see what, see what kind of mindset Saul has. And the king said unto the footmen that stood about him, 
turn and slay the priests of Jehovah because their hand also is with David and because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priests of Jehovah. The king said to Doeg, turn thou and fall upon the priests. And Doeg the Edomite turned and he fell upon the priests and slew on that day fourscore and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. And Nob, the city of the priests, smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and sucklings and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. Look at this slaughter. Verse 20. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abiathar showed David that Saul had slain Jehovah's priests. And David said unto Abiathar, I knew it that day when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of my father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he, hath, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life. But with me thou shalt be in safeguard. All right, so because they helped David, Saul orders all the priests in the city, their families were killed, they were killed, the oxen and the asses and the sheep were killed, the men, women, and children were killed. Uh, when we looked at Saul's behavior in our Envy and Associates lesson, we saw hatred and murder and fear and pettiness and dishonesty and a heart that divides wicked imaginations and lying and manipulation, all associates of envy. Now we can add paranoia. Saul is so bad off that he sees conspiracy in everyone. He charged his servants for, for not telling him. He charged the priest for helping David. He charged his son for being in league with David. His paranoia leads him to murder of the Lord's priests and David feels responsible. So look at Psalm 57. Now that we've seen what happened, let's see how David feels when he reflects on this. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusted in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me in the midst whereof they have fallen themselves. Selah. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake up, my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. Remember David started out this psalm talking about how he's among lions and their teeth are sharp. And now he's singing praise to Jehovah. Look at verse 10. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. When we read the thoughts of David during his fugitive years, we see the growth or the process that yielded the product. Now, what needs to be in the process that makes us a good product? Well, first of all, we saw David should have been a praying man. He ought to have prayed. He ought to have prayed before he made so many decisions. When he left the palace, he should have been praying. When he got to the priests, 
he should have prayed. When he asked for the bread that was hallowed bread, he should have prayed. When he left there and went to Achish, king of Gath, he should have prayed before he did that. And then he started acting out like he was mad. He should have been praying. Church, in order for us to grow into the Christians that God wants us to be, we got to be a praying church. That's what adversity ought to have us do. It ought to drive us to pray. Next week, we're going to look at another series of adversities that, that, that caused David to become the man that we know and read about, the greatest king in Israel's history. We hope you'll join us. We thank you so much for joining us. Please share these lessons. Give them to your friends and acquaintances and let them know you can learn a bit about the word of God. Until the next time, as always, we pray you be careful and be prayerful. God bless you. Lord, I'm your child.